So you probably noticed now that I've moved into a new studio. That's because I've moved to a new part of the world, back in the north, where I belong. I was fortunate enough to nip out to uh, one of the local indoor markets and there was a guy there with a record shop. Saw this little fella poking its head out at me. I slid it out of the box, took it out of its little plastic protective case. Didn't say anything, guy could see me looking. Is this original, mate? Yeah, it is. Good, I've got this one, good. Anything you can uh, do on the price? Yeah, it's a Zeppelin tattoo, mate. Yeah, big fan, big fan, big fan. Yeah, yeah, I'll knock your tenor off, done. Tenor, done. I know what you're thinking. What's he going on about? Thinking he's David Dickinson. Well, there's a point to this. The guy who sold me this said that Robert Plant used to frequently come in. Um, because he would bring his Land Rovers up to a certain garage, get them serviced and go and walk his dogs. And obviously sometimes he would come in and flick through the records. Missed that one, Planty, didn't you? So I thought, you know what? Local record shop, absolute steal. Planty's knocking round in his Land Rovers. Why don't I just teach you the solo from the Rover? So that's what I'm going to do. As always, I've broken this solo down into manageable sections. So here's the first one we're going to learn. So we start with the ninth fret of the A string, the note F sharp, and we're going to hammer on to the 11th fret. And we're going to do the same thing on the D string as well, same frets. Kind of a paranoid Black Sabbath vibe going on here. Uh, but then we make our way up to the ninth fret of the G and we hit that note. And we sustain that for a second before hitting the 11 on the G and that's the octave of the F sharp. I kind of slide out there because we're going to make our way down to the lower F sharp. So that's the second fret of the low E string. And then we hammer that note onto the fourth fret of the E, the note G sharp. And then this is exactly the same as what we've just done, but it's the octave below. So we hit the B, second fret of the A, hammer on. And then we hit the E on the second fret of the D. Now we make our way back up to the first position where we started, and we're gonna slide into that F sharp on the ninth fret with the third finger. We then hit the seven on the D, then the nine and then slide into the 11th fret of the D, and that's the note C-sharp. Now we have a quick hammer-on pull-off and a picked note. You can do a hammer-on pull-off and slide back, but I like to hammer on from the 9 to the 11, pull off, and then come back and pick the 7 on the D. But you can get the same effect from doing the hammer-on pull off on the slide. I just think that picked note gives it a little bit more definition. Altogether, that opening phrase goes like this. Now we have this phrase. So we're going to slide into the 11th fret of the D with the third finger, walking up again, 9, 11 on the G. Now we've got the really cool little hammer on pull off lick, which goes from the 9th fret of the B to the 10, and that's index and second finger. It's a quick hammer on pull off. Bring that back down to the 11 on the G, and then go back to the 9. Again, that's one of those um, techniques, if you've not done it before, you can kind of 
um, lift that out, extract it, practice it by itself. And then you can practice it just over and over again and annoy everybody. Um, and then maybe you could try adding in um, a different finger. You know, you can kind of try and practice building your own licks out of Jimmy's. So after that nine, we then just walk up the scale. So we go nine, 10, 12, nine, and then 12 on the B again. And you can follow me or the song for the rhythm. After that 12th fret of the B, we have a whole tone bend now, and it's coming from the 10th fret of the B. And it's quite difficult this because you'd probably be expected to use your second finger. And it's not a finger that we always bend with, but it's good practice um, strength building because sometimes we need to bend with just the index finger or in this case, the second finger. So make sure you put in the time practicing bending with different fingers. So that's gonna bend straight up from the 10th fret, from the note A to the 12th fret, the note B, and then it's gonna slowly um, fall back down to pitch. Remember, if you're unsure of what that's supposed to sound like, pitch the bend at the 12th fret, and then match to that note and let it back down. After that, we're gonna hit the ninth fret of the B by itself, 11th fret of the G, ninth fret of the G. Descending, three notes, and it's got a snappy little rhythm. Stick a little bit of vibrato on the end. So together, that sounds like this. The next section kind of just rolls as one, um, but I'm just gonna kind of slice it in the middle because it's busy and I want you to have, like I said, manageable sections. So it goes like this. So now we combine a little bit of what we've just learned, that walking up, and a little bit of the sort of hammer and pull off stuff that we did in the previous lick. So nine, 11, on the D and G again. Then we do that nine, 10, hammer on, pull off. Hit the 11 on the G. And then we walk up the nine, 10, 12 on the B. Hit the nine on the E. Back to the 12 on the B. So it's the same. Which is handy because we kind of feel like we're recycling something we've already learned. Now we go straight back to the nine after that 12 and we do another hammer on pull off. After the nine, 10 hammer on pull off, we hit the 11 on the G again. This time we make our way back to the nine on the B quickly. And then we hit the 11 on the G again and pull that off to the nine. And this time that 11, nine at the end is a pull off rather than picked. So that phrase goes like this. You'll notice that on that second hammer on pull off, I kind of give it a little bit of a delay rather than just, because I feel like there is a kind of slight um, difference in the delivery. If you listen again slow, Next part of the solo. So we start with that 11, nine pull off on the G, hit the 11 on the D, and then go back to the nine on the G. After we've done that, we're gonna very quickly play the 11 on the D, but slide it straight into the nine. Then after that, we're gonna pick the seven with the index finger. And it kind of sustains for a second on that ninth fret before we pick the seventh fret with the index finger. After you've played the seven, you're gonna hit the nine again with the third finger and then pull that off. And then nine on the A, and then go back to the seven on the D. And then just to finish that little bit, we have another nine on the A and a seven on the D. Thank you.
Now we have a really cool little sliding phrase that goes like this. So you're going to slide from the 9th fret of the D to the 11 with the 3rd finger. And then we're going to hit the 9th fret of the G with the index finger four times. I like to go down, up, down, up, down. So, so those two previous phrases back to back a little bit slower. So you can see um, that little pause in the middle that I was talking about. And here's the last part of the solo. These first three notes are going to be staccato, so they're going to be very choppy. So you don't want them ringing out like that. We want them like this. You can do it a couple of different ways. You can release the finger pressure after you've played a note. Uh, and you can also combine that with a little bit of kind of like dampening of the right hand here. Like that. Um, you can also bring the pick back into the string. And if you touch the string again, obviously you're going to kill it dead. And, and those kind of combined will like really keep it tidy. So there I've got a little bit of um, the right hand dampening and the picks coming back to the string as well. And you can hear the difference between and that. Okay, so that's how that happens. That's how it works. So after that 16th fret bend, we then hit the 14 on the B and then the 14 on the E. If you played a lot of solos, you've probably played that lick a lot of times. Then we hit the 17th fret of the B and we're going to do a whole step bend up, third finger. Now, it's important to use the third finger here or the second finger because what you have to do is catch the 17th fret on the high E whilst that's bent up. You're going to hit that pre-bent note and then let it down. Once you've let it down, you're going to hit the 14th fret of the B. Then you kind of just repeat those three notes again. 17 on the high E. But this time I kind of hear a, a bend up and a down rather than just a pre-bend, which makes it a bit easier. And then you hit the 14th fret of the B again with the index finger. And you can just practice looping that around until you get to grips with it. Um, don't be put off if these kind of things sound a little bit messy when you're doing them slow or just uh, repeating them. You can hear when I'm playing it here, it's, it's not spot on. Um, but playing along to the track, a backing track, um, or even just like a drum machine, you, you kind of get into the groove of it and, and the delivery will continue to improve. After we've repeated that phrase, we're going to finish with this. So it's a very quick whole tone bend on the 16th fret of the G. And as soon as you bend it up, again, bring the pick back down to the string to kind of choke the note. Because then you're going to pick it pre-bent and release it. Then hit the 14 with the index. 16th fret of the D. And then we're finishing on the note E with the index finger. That's the 14th fret of the D string. I'll just play through the whole thing slow now um, so you can see how it all fits together.
Thanks for choosing to learn this particular solo with me today. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like on it, hit subscribe, whack the little bell next to it. Like I said, a little love does go a long way. And as always, if you want the tabs for any of my lessons, consider checking out my Patreon. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next video.